we had some moonies and so I'm gonna cover them a little bit here yeah here's the first one fellas says Challenger accident with the names of the twins yes twins just look them up he's saying that uh, some people survived uh, the Challenger that they're still around alive and I showed I think a picture of that last time it looks like this and they show some of these people same names being older and they say oh that these people exist still so that challenger was a hoax by the government you know and uh, why do you believe this <laughs> is the question I've got you know why do you believe this what you see there uh, I mean people uh, they, they want to doubt the government they said you know I've been burned by the government so many times there's so many conspiracies so many false flags but then they believe this and they don't question that. They say, oh, look, yeah, it's the same person. How do you, why do you believe that? Where did you get that? <laughs> I mean, someone could be playing a hoax on you. Maybe it's the CIA for you, know, the same government. Another fellow says, uh, says um, mentions this uh, astronaut, Ed, Ed Mitchell, and he's the sixth astronaut to walk on the moon. This fellow believes that ET visited us. There have been crashed craft, okay? There have been material and bodies recovered. And he was referring to, to Roswell, okay, in New Mexico, where uh, there was a, some time back, a couple decades ago, you know, uh, they said they found uh, an unidentified flying object, and then uh, they, they showed these pictures. They have them in a museum over there in Roswell, where they see uh, this ET, and uh, <laughs> and uh, people go and will see this, and they go, ooh, and, uh, and one of these is this fellow, Ed Mitchell. The fact that he's an astronaut doesn't mean that he knows anything or that he, uh, you know, uh, can prove any of this. Oh, oh, he's got his an opinion and he's giving you his opinion that, you know, the government is hiding a lot of this stuff in secret places and that the ETs actually visited us and there was a crash of a craft. And that's just his opinion. And uh, the important thing is that NASA distanced himself, itself from uh, Ed Mitchell and said that uh, that was his personal opinion, that they don't agree with what he's saying. So, again, you know, uh, the fact that someone important, you can have a president think that, um, ETs are for real. It's his opinion, nothing but. Okay, here we hold another thing that you cannot travel interstellarly. It's impossible for any living entity to travel to another star. Okay, just that simple. Okay, so um, uh, and uh, you have to look through my site, look the Pioneer uh, Anomaly video, and it'll explain why we cannot travel to another star. We never will. Uh, we're, I don't even think uh, we're going to colonize, uh, yeah, you know, some object in the solar system like Mars or the moon. I doubt that's going to happen. We can probably somehow put a, you know, some hut out there with lights with all the things there and live a few astronauts, maybe 10 astronauts can live in there. That might happen. I doubt it very much, but we're not going to, we're not going to evacuate the earth. We're not going to colonize Mars or the moon. None of that is ever going to happen. So forget about colonization. Uh, that part of the budget of NASA that goes to that, if it develops some new technology, more power to them. But to say that we're actually going to colonize the uh, moon and Mars and live there and so on, absolute nonsense. Never going to happen. Okay. Okay, another fellow says, uh, Neil Armstrong stepped on Mars. You can't prove that Neil Armstrong did not step on Mars. This is the line of argument you are using. Um, what can I say, okay? Again, I can't reproduce Napoleon. I cannot reproduce... Neil Armstrong stepping on the moon in 1969 again. I cannot reproduce that incident because even if I did, you would not believe it and say that was done in Hollywood, etc., etc. So there's no way to prove anything from the past. You cannot prove history. You cannot prove that Caesar existed or that he went to London, you know, to England. Uh, so you're looking for something that's impossible. You cannot prove the past. Uh, you can make an assumption. You, uh, people say believe. You don't really believe. You make an assumption. You take some things for granted. We take for granted that Napoleon was a man that uh, lived 200 years ago, and he did all this stuff. And why do we uh, accept that? Well, because it was passed on from generation to generation. There's no reason not to accept it. Okay? Um, but again, you have to take that with a grain of salt because you might accept that, that the Napoleon was there, but do you accept that he uh, ate five times a day? Someone might have theorized that and say, you know, I think uh, Napoleon every day, for whatever reason, he ate five times a day. He can come up with anything. And you say, do you believe that now? Do you accept that? You know, and so it's how much you want to accept from the past. Now you're going to make an assumption, you know, about the existence and what Caesar did. You make that assumption based on what you read, what they passed, what our forefathers passed down to us. But you cannot reproduce Caesar going to England. You cannot reproduce Napoleon going to Waterloo. You can't reproduce that. You just have to accept it on face value, and, and that's it. There's no more than that. And same with the moons, uh, moon landings, you know.
Okay, uh, here's another fellow, and he says, it, is it even possible to see an object 350 feet long from 250 miles away? Okay, he's talking about the ISS, the International Space Station. Um, can you get your binoculars, can you get your telescope and see it out there when it goes around the Earth? Remember, uh, NASA um, has the schedule for when it goes through what countries, you know, up there. And uh, this thing passes 15 times a day, uh, about an hour, uh, every hour and a half through the same regions, okay? So it goes around, you know, quite fast. And the question is, can you see it, he said. Uh, does the human eye even have the resolution, uh, resolve, uh, resolving power? I doubt an aircraft carrier could be seen from 100 miles away. Okay, and so uh, this is a shot of the moon through a pair of binoculars someone took. The moon is a little bigger, obviously, than uh, the ISS, <laughs> uh, but it's a lot farther away. And yet we, there's a shot through a pair of binoculars. This is more or less what you would see if you get your binoculars and focus it on the moon. You would see something similar to that. And you say, how is it possible to see something so far away? Well, we've invented telescopes and microscopes and uh, binoculars and so on. Uh, that's what we used to see far away. And what can I say? Uh, just prove it to yourself. Get a pair of binoculars and see if you can see the eye. I said, don't question whether you can see it. Try to see it and then say, yeah, I can see it. Uh, obviously, you'd be answering your own question there. So again, I don't know. Uh, some of these people should, should just do it. <laughs> Grab a pair of binoculars, go out there. Don't, don't keep questioning. Can you see it? Well, do it, and you'll find out if you can see it. That way you don't, because if I say, yes, you can see it, you'll say, well, I don't believe you, Bill. And so what have we done? We, we haven't learned anything, neither you nor I. So what you got to do is do it yourself, okay? This is something you can prove to yourself. That's why I say the ISS is a good way of handling the moon landings, not because you're going to believe in the moon landings, but because if you can see the ISS up there and you are convinced and you finally covered that base and say, okay, the ISS is out there. It is rolling around the earth. It is a monster. It's, it's, a device. it's not a hologram, as one guy said, there, <laughs> or some pair of lights or whatever. No, you see it going around and you say, okay, it's, it's there. I verified it for myself. And no one told me about it. The CIA is not trying to do a false flag or trying to convince me. No, I saw it with my own eyes. If you cover that base, then the next step is very simple. How did that thing get up there? Did they do that in one shot? Or did they take several rockets? Or did they take several projects first before they could build that thing up there and that's when you start pulling on the little string that takes you to the center of the labyrinth okay that's the way it works okay uh someone says along the same line even if you would see something resemble the iss in the sky then you would need to prove that it is a space station and not something else again uh, uh if you can't tell the difference between you know uh, an object up there then maybe you just you have to get a more powerful telescope microscope uh binocular uh, pair of lenses, I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to call it, uh, detective uh, eyeglass. You know, you just get a powerful one and convince yourself that that thing that's out there is, you know, a, a big um, field, you know, like a football field size object that's rolling around the earth. And once you convince yourself of that, it's uh, you've got half the battle won, 90% of the battle won, because now you say, okay, uh, they went through all these steps to get that thing up there. That means they did run all these experiments, these projects where they sent things into space, among them Gagarin and Tereshkova and Laika and all these other things that they sent up there. And yeah, why not? Uh, rockets to the moon with or without people. I mean, uh, why don't you think that we could send a rocket to the moon? You don't think that's possible? And yeah, I mean, what can I say? I mean, if you're a flat earther, I can see why you would not want to believe that because you say, well, if we can send something out there, we could have taken a picture of the earth and we know it's round and that would destroy their theory. So they go with second best. They say, we never sent anything out there. Okay. So I can understand why they have a, a reason not to believe. What is your, if you're an intelligent person, you know, and you believe that the moon landings uh, did not happen simply because you've been fooled so much by the government and by conspiracies and so on. Well, just verify what you can verify, which is the ISS.